everybody and welcome back to Umineko episode 1 part 3 I'm Lorelai and today we're gonna continue where we left off from that beautiful beautiful rose garden with the beautiful beautiful people Wow Its facade was lovely of course but even more than that we couldn't help but have our hearts stolen away by the splendor of that beautiful rose garden that spread for it Ha! As they reached the top of the stone steps, the people welcomed in by the rose garden voiced their appreciation one after the other. Kotoshiwaskoshihanani even so, it was a delightful rose garden. I remember that huge amounts of roses used to greet me every year, even over six years ago. This rose garden was the first thing that greeted the people who came to Rokenjima. Even our parents, who came every year, couldn't help but let their wonder slip out. And moreover, it even looked like a little powered up version of the garden from six years ago that was in my memories. いつ見てもすごいわね。自宅にこれだけのバラ園があったら、さぞや素敵でしょうに。よせよ。誰が手入れすんだよ。バラは虫とか病気とか大変なんだぜ。そうね。キリエ姉さんは毎日バラの手入
そのバラは他のどのバラよりも早く開花できたんだと思うぜそうだよねいっぱい咲いてその役目を終えてお休みに入ったってだけのことだと思うぜそんなに気に病むことはねえさ It seemed that Maria's pure, sensitive nature was making her feel some emotional pain for the rose that withered alone. Even though she understood the logic of it, it still felt lonely to her. Josh and Nikki straightened up and felt around his pocket. He then took out the wrapping from the candy he had eaten on a plane. He twisted it into a Thin string and gently tied it to the rose as a sort of marker. Hey, Nanda ka kawai k u n a t a ne? Korega, Kono bara no mejirushi da yo. Ato de, o m i z u t o k a o a g e n i k i t e gora. Bara san mo, kitto yorokobu to omo yo. Uh, o m i z u t o k a o a g e n i k u r Sekko k u d o k o r o Kono bara san ni, nani ka namai o tsuke te a g e r u to i yo. So s u r to, bara san mo yorokobu to omo shi. マリアちゃんと心もきっと通い合うと思うよ名前名前うんうん Though she still wore her usual sullen face, Maria crossed her arms and began to consider this intently. At the very least, she appeared to have been completely pulled out of her slump. Nice going, Aniki. ジョージ兄さんって昔から包容力があるよな。尊敬するぜ。だな。人徳ってやつだろ。後で爪の赤をもらってきてやるから、一緒に飲もうぜ。この庭園は、お前が子供の頃にもこんなに立派だったんか私が出てってからよ、こんなに立派になったのは。前の庭園の方が素朴で愛着があったんだけどね。兄さんがちょっと悪趣味にいじりすぎたのよ前の方がずっと良かったんだからエヴァポジティブシンキングやで昔は置いといて今のこの美しさをめでなあかんその方が心が安らかになるで別にそんな意味じゃんただ私は昔の方が素敵だった庭園をあなたにも見てほしかったなってだけよそれでは皆様よろしいでしょうか Finally? そろそろお部屋の方にご案内いたします I'm so excited to see the rooms Gora-san called to everyone to ask if we were ready But our hearts had been completely stolen away by the rose garden after a year of absence and we didn't lend him a year Since we weren't a travel group it wasn't like we had a strict schedule to follow Besides, for our parents This was the fond old birth home they had returned to, so they felt no obligation to be pressured by anyone. Understanding the situation, Goda san continued to wait with a wide smile for our parents to lose interest in the roses and tell him to guide us to the rooms. Well? Oi! Kanon kun ya nai ka! Sashiburi ya na! Genki ka! Uncle Hideyoshi suddenly shouted. In the direction he was waving, there was a slender boy. Meeting him right after a huge man like Goda probably emphasized his small stature. The boy was in the middle of transporting piled up gardening tools and the like in a wheelbarrow. When he realized he was being called to stop, he set down the wheelbarrow, took his head off, and bowed his head. Oh, how polite. <sighs> I figured he was probably younger than me. I realized by the general atmosphere surrounding him that he was a servant too. Though he did greet Uncle Hideyoshi back, he himself seemed like he might be unsociable. I get that feeling too. It was a greeting that lacked feeling. When Goda san noticed that our interest had shifted towards him, he went to the boy's side and introduced him to us. バトラ様、ご紹介いたします。後宮本家にお仕えしております使用人の一人です。So、young? カノンさん、お客様にご挨拶を。はじめまして。It、sounds like a girl though。使用人のカノンです
Yep, my first impression wasn't wrong. He gave the feeling that he was unsociable, or maybe a bit of a poor speaker. In contrast with Goda's son, who was extraordinarily polished as a servant, it was impossible not to feel the immaturity you expect of someone his age. Before, I just wanted to say this, but... Canon? Canon? <laughs> he has this... the... image? Insignia? on his collar that so far only people related to the main family has. I wonder if it's, you know, does it even mean anything? When Goda's son urged him in a whisper to give a bit of an, more of an introduction, the boy in canon only cast his eyes downwards. Kanon-san, Furniture. It seemed he wasn't refusing to greet us out of spite, but rather he gave the impression that he didn't know what else to add to his greeting, and so could do nothing other than stay silent. Uh, I guess Jessica would know him. I saw even though it's not like he made a super bad impression, Jessica hurriedly backed him up. I see. Apparently, him being unsociable works against him all the time. A silence as if evaluating whether it was a question that must be answered or not. But here again, Jessica plowed ahead. That's so young. It looked at it looked like if given a choice, he would have preferred not to tell us his age. Him not wanting to tell his age was probably because he thought he would be looked down upon for it. I remember that when I was around his age, I hated being asked how old I was by adults. I see. 16, huh? That's gotta be a delicate time. In that case, I asked something I shouldn't have. <laughs> At least Butler can... Uh, how do you say this? Hello? The conversation? Better? Jessica looked flustered for some reason. She seemed to think that my impression of Canon was worsening because of his rejection. Well, I doubt a girl like Jessica un understands his fretful male heart. As his elder, even by just two years, would lead him into adolescence, I took it upon myself to understand that. Is that why Goda is always smiling? It seemed as though he was often warned about his discourtesy. And apparently, he hadn't improved a bit. Yoda san kept his business smile, but let a small sigh of resignation escape. It looked like Canon himself was uncomfortable with remaining silent here any longer. After another perfunctory bow, he turned on his heels and started pushing the wheelbarrow again. Just then, the wheelbarrow wobbled and fell, scattering the load. I guess the wheelbarrow with its single wheel caught on a pebble and lost its balance. Koda urged him al along in a low voice, as if to remind him that it is a servant's shame to present a clumsy appearance in front of guests. Showing that he understood quite well without being told, Kanan-kun 
wordlessly reloaded the wheelbarrow with the fallen objects. He seemed to be fine to light looking gardening tools, shovels and such, but he looked like he was having trouble getting his arms around and lifting some sacks of fertilizer. With an elegant gesture, Goda-san took the shovel that Jessica had picked up. At his back was the figure of Kenan Kun having troubles, trouble with the sex of fertilizer. Oh, <sighs> Accident. I lifted up the other bags that had fallen. Of course, they weren't light, but for me, it was a piece of cake. Flexing now, are we? Kenan Kun turned his surprised eyes towards me. It was the face of one who would never have expected to receive help from a guest. Kun <laughs> looked like he hadn't yet gone through his growth spurt and was stuck with a sort of weak body. I guess this kind of weight is a bit much for him. Banter <laughs> made the job seem quick, and before I knew it, all the staff had been piled back into the wheelbarrow. I'm gonna just say it first, but I have doubts about Kenan's gender. Well, I'll just look like a clown if I'm wrong, but I'll look like a super genius if I'm right. And then there's that thing about the insignia on his collar, which also makes me think he's related to the main families. But I don't know, and we'll just have to see. Letting such a disgraceful thing be seen by the guests who were supposed to be made welcome must have been hideously embarrassing as a servant. Pressed by Goda to hurry up and exit, Kenan Kun left. Without even a twitch in the smile, Goda san apologized elegantly. I think it's nice that Hideyoshi has a lot of nice things to say about other people. <笑><笑><笑> Everyone smiled wryly at that shameless lie. Even she herself didn't believe that, not in her wildest dreams. She said that to loosen us all up. Yeah, that's the kind of character Kumasawa's Ba-chan used to be. The mood that had stiffened a little was cleared up in a twinkling thanks to Kumasawa-san's cheerful smile. Goda-san, I don't know why, but I'm so excited to know the rooming arrangements. Like, just the thought of having such a nice big house to myself makes me feel happy. 
どうぞこちらへ。We headed towards the trim and elegant guest house. This was going to be our temporary quarters for a night. Canon watched over a hedge as the guests all entered the guest house. We're shifting POV now? Then he let his eyes fall on those heavy sacks of fertilizer, piled up in the wheelbarrow. In his mind, he kept going over his previous mistake. Bedler, big and strong, had picked up the sacks in front of him, the sacks he couldn't lift himself, as if they were feathers. It was extremely difficult for an outside observer to guess what emotions that favor had stirred up in Canon. But as far as you could tell by watching him hang his head from behind, there was something that he just couldn't let go. Muttered words escaped his lips. But those words he murmured were so soft that they didn't even reach his own ears. <laughs> Kanan hung his head, slightly biting his lower lip. Bara no tea and a kyokuni at on the kato yo. Kono guest house, tsuno a kyokuni nena. Kore, tateta no a psychin ka? Torayan? Visitor's retreat was written on a gatepost like thing. But since everyone called it a guest house, I followed their lead. The brand new Western style guest house that stood overlooking the rose garden had a magnificent design carefully done in harmony with the garden. That's quite recent. それ以降は僕たちはこっちに泊めさせてもらってるんだよ。年季の入ったボロ屋敷よりこっちの方が好評みてえだしな。私も自分の部屋をこっちに持ちたいぜ。<笑> I guess you could call my house upper class as well, but I was reminded again how completely ordinary it was compared to the head house. It showed a shocking display of wealth that they would build this kind of awesome guest house for guests who would come over like once a year. Eva sama, Hideyoshi sama. こちらのお部屋をお使いくださいませ。ルドルフ様、綺麗様はこちらのお部屋をお使いくださいませ。やっぱりここは綺麗で上品でいいわね。洋風って本当に素敵だわ。本能に3日なら洋風もええやろが、
って割には、相変わらずピンピン、カリカリ、イライラしてるって話です。<笑>今年も相変わらず不機嫌ってわけね。おもりができるのは、やっぱり源氏さんだけなの ?I remember, Genji さん is the butler. So, we're talking about the same guy here. The one that was drinking the weird green stuff. お館様も、源氏さんにだけは心を許しておいでのようです。私たち、下々では、近頃はお目通りすらなかなか叶わず。また、書斎に閉じこもって、怪しげな黒魔術三昧じゃねえのかな。何をやろうとてめえの趣味だから構わねえけど、匂いが立ち込める系は勘弁してほしいもんだぜ。ついでにそのまま、詳細から永久に出てくんなってんだ。It's kind of harsh. <笑>年長の人に、そんな言い方をするもんじゃないよ。後宮家を復興させてくれた大恩人なんだから、もっと感謝しないと。うん。まあ、ごめん。After being rebuked by George Aniki, Jessica had no choice but to take back her thoughtless remark. The Ushiro Miya family was wealthy beyond belief, but that, of course, meant that all of its members were eccentric people completely at odds with the rest of society. The head of the family, standing at its peak, in other words, our grandfather, seemed to be a particularly eccentric and terrifying person. Even for a family. Dad said he was getting a stomachache earlier, but I guess that was what all the adults who came here today were actually feeling. No doubt they were jealous of us, the grandchildren, just playing and laughing without a care. From the stories Dad told me, the head of the family was a violent man who rained blows on his sons with his own fists and even beat his daughters mercilessly with a wooden sword. If he was such a staunch traditionalist with his kids, why wasn't he the same with their names? Because of that, even us grandkids have to suffer. Well, I have absolutely no trouble believing the terrifying image they paint of him. I don't have many memories of meeting him over the years, but I remember his face was full of menacing thunderclouds, always making the people around him shrink away with a sharp look. I remember that the room's atmosphere got so tense whenever he was around, you couldn't even breathe. What my dad said right now about me being the guest of honor now carries a little more oomph for me. Six years ago, I was a young man. But now, I'm a young man. If you have a good attitude, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a good one, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one, but it's not a bad person. 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 口下手なだけで、ちゃんと筋は通す人だよ。ジョージ兄さんは昔から成績優秀で、一族の鏡じゃねえかよ。私たちとじゃ、じい様の待遇が全然違うぜ。私なんか木刀で引っ張ってかれたことあるしよ。My goodness。尻だぜ、尻。それも乙女の生尻をよ。ジェシカちゃんは、本家の跡取り娘だもん。おじい様も、特に目をかけてくれてるんだよ。I don't buy that. その厳しさは期待の気持ちの裏返しだと思わなくちゃ。冗談じゃねえぜ。その跡取りってやつはジョージ兄さんに譲るよ。私が担ぐにはちょいとしんどいぜ。I think I already said it before, but Jessica is the daughter who will inherit the head house. The pressure on her shoulders must be different from us cousins of the branch families. I didn't know they considered themselves the branch families. So Jessica is the main family because she's the daughter of the oldest son, I guess. That's so cute. <laughs> 私が墓まで背負ってくよ。I don't know why, but that sounds kind of like 
Foreshadowing? I'm getting scared. <laughs> While grateful for Maria's innocent co consideration, it seemed that Jessica could not easily rid herself of the anxiety for the future that remained visible on her face. I guess I'm no different. Any high schooler with exams looming ahead is bound to have an anxiety for the future that they can't hide. Maria, you're here. お母さんとマリアはこの部屋よ。バトラ君は僕と一緒にこっちの部屋だってさ。おお。To be honest, if they're so rich, why can't everyone have one room to themselves? But that's besides the point. なになに？こりゃ驚いた。親たちの部屋より広めじゃないのよ。Wow! どうせいとこ同士で集まるだろうと思ってよ。大きめの部屋にするように言っておいたんだ。おお。マリアもこっちがいい。ママと一緒よりこっちがいい。おお。そうか。マリアもこっちがいいか。よし。ここは俺とジ
、私に聞かなくて、熊沢さんには聞くことって、何かなぁ。なぁ、全然見当がつかねえぜ。いや、誤解だよ。ジェシカちゃんが何を誤解してるのか知らないけど。Aniki was getting pretty tongue tied. It's like he has something to hide, and Jessica has the dirt on him. Whatever it is, something only Jessica knows and I don't is no fun at all. Nah, Maria. Ore tachi dake no kemono nante ne yo na. Nah no hanashika, kikite yo na. Patra to Maria mo kikite. I fooled around while ooing together with Maria. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so curious. I really want to know. <laughs> Josh and Nikki rolled around on the bed in an effort to get away, and Maria and I played around chasing him. There's something in the back of my mind telling me I'm a high schooler now and not a damn kitten, but in spite of that, I miss this kind of fun. A warm kind of fun. <laughs> Joji ni san ga Kumasawa san ni kiita no wa ne. Mmm. Ma, hora, are da ze. Ni san mo honke wa ich nen buri da kara yo. Sono aida ni yameta shio nin to ka haitta shio nin to ka. So yu no ga ita ra aisatsu shita i itte. So yu koto ra shi ze. Oh. Aisatsu sure. Maria mo aisatsu sure. なんだよそれ全然やましくねえじゃねえかよ兄貴<笑>違うなマリア騙されるな兄貴は何か隠してるぞ尋問再開だうおりゃいや,やめてよ本当に<笑>マリアちゃんももうやめて<笑><笑>多分掃除とか昼飯の準備とかで忙しいんだよ。大丈夫。後でちゃんと挨拶に来るぜ。ゴーダの出しゃばりの出迎えより、シャノンの出迎えの方が良かったってんだろ ?I knew it.I knew it something like this. <笑>シャノンシャノン。<笑>思い出したぜそんな子もいたな今も使用人やってんのか元気かよ夏日姉さん最近頭痛の方はどうなんや一時だいぶしんどそうにしとったろおかげで最近はだいぶ調子がいいです心配をしてくれてありがとうそうだこれ夏日姉さんにお土産いつもありがとうあなたには何かをもらってばかりねこれは紅茶ペパーミントとレモンバームのハーブティー頭痛によく効くって有名なお店のブレンドなの。姉さんにも効くかなって思って。Rosa was always a conscientious woman. Probably because she was the youngest of the four and by quite some distance. She managed to grow up without harboring the venomosity of her siblings. Yeah, she does seem like a really nice lady. Her consideration made Natsuhi soften her expression for just a moment. But it wasn't enough to undo the many years of anxiety that had curdled her expression into one of bland indifference. So, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. Jessica, I'm going to do that. 
人生の節目じゃない母親のあなたがそんなじゃ頼りないわよ。But she's so mean. それに夏日姉さん私より三つも若いんだから。Well, now that is actually mean. もうちょっとしっかりなさい。<笑>ごめんなさい。生まれつきの頭痛持ちなもので。Eva sometimes fails to choose her words carefully, but even though she hit, hit it with a smile, her comments aimed at Natsuhi contained shards of obvious malice. Of course, that didn't escape Natsuhi. She frantically contained her urge to grimace and pretended to ignore Eva. なつひねさんみたいにずつになるくらい真剣になりなさいよ。俺が何か言えば必ず反抗する奴だぜ。じゃあなんて言うんだ。むしろ逆で遊んでていいぞっていうのか。あいつそういうのだけは素直に聞き
いえあのどうもおしゃべりは配膳を済ませてからになさいお茶が冷めますも申し訳ございません奥様 She apologized like a small frightened animal and bumping against the serving cart made a jarring record as she dropped several teaspoons Oh no Her clumsiness made Natsuhi's expression even harsher, which made Shannon in turn quail even more. And I would guess it's because Eva made Natsuhi、um, so anxious that Natsuhi is now taking out her anger on Shannon. もう十分待たされてる分、十分お茶も冷めてるもの。<笑>そ、それは大丈夫です。冷めてはおりませんので。シャノン、早く配膳を済ませなさい。ち、失礼しました、奥様。It was obvious that Natsuhi was getting irritated. The ineptitude that delayed the tea, the clumsiness of the servant, Everything pointed to the incompetence of Natsuhi's everyday guidance, making her lose face. As the person in charge of matters of the Ushiro Miya head house, allowing that clumsiness to be exposed today of all days was surely nothing less than total humiliation. Yo se yo, Natsuhine san. Sharon chan da te gamba te no ni. Ijime cha kawai so da ze. Ijime te no ka imasu. I kaori ne. お茶の銘柄を聞いてもいいかしらキリエ always knows how to break the tension えっとも申し訳ございません後ほど調べてまいりますキリエ had tried to be nice to her wanting to cut through the tense mood however instead Shannon had shown a disgraceful display darkening Natsuhi's face and the room's mood by this point Eva's giggles were loud enough to be heard by everyone in the room. Nani? Shannon chan, jibun de i r e t e r mono ga nani ka mo w a k a r a n a i no? Seems like Eva is bullying Shannon too. Dame yo! Son na ya shige na mono o rai kek ni furumat cha. Kon na o cha cha, gin no spoon de mo nai to no me nai wa yo. Su, su mi masen. すぐに用意をねえシャノンちゃん銀のスプーンって何に使うか知ってる銀じゃないとダメなのよなぜかわかるい,いえあの Eva's eyes played over Shannon who was setting the table as a catty smile floated onto her face Taken on its own the expression on Eva's face may have been charming in an impish sort of way However, the words being spun from her lips held within them the keenness of a razor. Shannon tried with all her might to avoid Eva's gaze, which continued to focus on her. Grasping that Shannon had, was hard pressed for an answer, Rosa promptly gave some timely help. The tea was being treated as undrinkable unless it could first be tested for poison. In Natsuhi's eyes, this was an insult to both the tea and herself for serving it. Rudolph, laughing flippantly, patted Eva's shoulder. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> わしはその毒舌を毎日聞かされとるからもう毒に耐性がついてしもたわエヴァもわし相手には構わんが耐性のない相手にはちいと加減せんとな<笑>あらあらひどいシャノンちゃんにお茶の知識を教えてあげただけじゃない<笑> I don't like this Everyone followed the lead set by Hideyoshi's horse laugh and smile, though sourly. There remained a single exception to this in Natsuhi. But even so, for the time being, the conversation inside the parlor could now be mistaken for a lively and friendly chat.
As Shannon finally finished setting the tea table and made to leave, Kirie apologized to her in a low voice for not being able to help. Shannon gave a light bow and made a hasty retreat. Shannon cast her eyes downwards, pushing the cart down the corridor. The pitiful air around her made it obvious that she had borne the brunt of some bullying. So they are siblings? No wonder Shannon and Cannon. <laughs> so you are Yakuna Dakara. Oksama Moeba Sama Mojigo Kue Ochiro. Demo. So really, he is none of heights. Ooh. Cannon glared hatefully in the opposite direction of the parlor. George? The preparations for the tea had been delayed by a little bit of trouble in the kitchen. That trouble had not been Shannon's fault. The truth is that it had been Goda's mistake. In the first place, there was no way that a show-off like Goda would ever hand off a flamboyant job like carting the tea to the guests. He had needed to make the tea all over again, which had made him late. So. Realizing that he wouldn't be earning any brownie points, he had pushed the task of setting the table on Shannon, who happened to be passing by. One could truthfully call it being shrewd, and one could unquestionably call it cowardice. I still have my suspicions about Canon being related to the family, given his insignia, and Shannon who is maybe blood related to Canon doesn't have the insignia though. So maybe he is a half sibling or adopted? <sighs> Canon's silence vividly showed that Shannon's words weren't coming from a heart. Suddenly, they both felt someone's presence and whirled around. Oh, it's Genji! An elderly man stood there. It was Genji, the head servant. He has the same insignia on his his clothes too. Maybe I'm wrong about Canon. <laughs> you know, I forgot how deep his voice was. Shannon <laughs> humbly obeyed and promptly made to push the cart and leave. However, Canon appealed to Genji in silence bearing something in his eyes that he could not express in his words. どうした何かあったかシャ、シャノンは何も悪くないのに。やめてかのんくん。失礼しました。すぐに仕事に戻ります。かのんくんも自分の持ち場に戻って。お願い。姉さんがそう言うなら。何事もないならそうしなさい。
自分より長い年季を持ちながらも未熟で人生経験も及ばないシャノンさんとカノン君を断るる元にいびられるのですまた気の毒なことに夏日奥様にも嫌われておりますもちろん年季という意味では奥様の方が長くこの家におられますただこればかりは奥様にも同情しなくてはなりません本当に親方様も罪作りな方でございますご自身のちょっとした気まぐれが奥様にこれほどまでの劣等感をお与えになるとはどうして思い至らなかったのでしょう、really、getting deeper deeper. and deeper. もちろん奥様とて内心はあの二人に辛く当たる言われは何もないことを重々承知してはおりますしかしそれが理屈で分かっているからといってどうにもならないのが人の心ああほいたわしや私には何もできずこうして物陰から見守ることしかできないのですおまいくんなすおいしえだわすけり I'm so shocked by everything. I'm just taking in all the things that happened, and all I know is that there's a lot of rivalry, or maybe, I don't know, some kind of jealousy or anger, hostility between Eva and Natsuhi. And Natsuhi then takes that out on Kenan and Shannon for some reason, which I feel might have to do with the whole master thing that Kumasawa? Kumasawa? Oh shit, I forgot a name. But that the old servant was saying. So, there's a lot to unpack. But if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to. I'll see you next time and bye!